it's the next level. Did you turn your hearing aid off? No, honey, I know. I know what happens. I was there. We knew it wasn't there. It's that guy. Yeah, man. The battle's just begun. We'll conquer the Chitauri. Let you swarm when we're done. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the first and second episodes of Marvel's Hawkeye on Disney+. And the first episode of Hawkeye, episode one, Never Meet Your Heroes. So the synopsis of that, Steve, what is it? So Archer Kate Bishop lands in the middle of a criminal conspiracy, forcing Hawkeye out of retirement. Very small, <laughs> very precise. <laughs> yeah, there was another one that was way longer and way and more involved, and I was just like, "Nah, I'll just do the short one." So, <laughs> was that the Disney Plus one, or was that no? The- there was actually two on IMDb, and it was one that was like three or four sentences and had a whole bunch of stuff in it that that didn't need to be there. So, <laughs> ah, okay, I I always like just short and straight to the mm-hmm. point. You know, yep. synopsis. It makes it a lot easier to, you know, it's like, oh, okay, ba, 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 ba. all right, good, done, I'm in. It's Otherwise, you have to read these long, convoluted two paragraphs. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, so uh, with that, we'll just go into initial thoughts about the uh, first episode. I, I loved it. I, I thought it was really, really good. On, on on my first watch, I was a little bit confused because for some reason, you know, in uh, in Infinity War – and uh, in game, they kind of showed his daughter, you know, mm-hmm. like with the bow and arrow. And so I had, for some reason in my brain, I had always thought that this was going to be his daughter. Oh, playing, same here. Playing yeah. this, that Haley Stanford was going to be playing his daughter, uh, that he was going to be teaching. I didn't realize she was going to be a whole new character mm-hmm. that that just you know it came, comes out of the out of the blue. So I yeah. was it confused me a little bit at the beginning when we have this when they they went back and we'll talk some more about that beginning um, mm-hmm. in in my notes. But but once I figured out, okay, wait a minute, okay, it's not his daughter. His daughter's not going to be the the female archer in this. She's just a girl who uh, he's going to end up mentoring or or whatever by the end of the season. Yeah, he turns into uh, Sean Connery, like in Highlander, teaching the Highlander how to be a Highlander, you know? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But, yeah, uh, from my thoughts, too, I really enjoy this show very much. It was something I've been anticipating. A lot of people never really loved the character Hawkeye, Mm -hmm. which I understand, too. It's kind of like the Aquaman of the Marvel Cinematic or, or or Marvel Comics, as it were, or even like Green Arrow, but Aqu- I, I feel it's more Aquaman from like uh, the Justice League cartoon series back in the day, and how the Big Bang Theory used to like complain about. I don't want to be Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> Raj wouldn't want to be you know the one to play Aquaman when they did the Justice League, because Hawkeye is just pretty much just an average Joe. And and he is a soldier, and he's very talented, very unique. I, I, I equate him close to almost like Bullseye in, in the DC uh, universe and uh, the DC comics. But, you know, he's never given his due. So I think with this show, they give him his due. And I, I'm really impressed with how, you know, the first two episodes we got. And I really enjoy it. And it's something I've been looking forward to because Haley Steinfeld, honestly, she uh, she probably showed up on your radar just the same as mine too, Steve. When it comes to like with True Grit, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, yeah. was the first movie. I was like, oh wow, and I think she was what thirteen at the time. Maybe? Yeah, she was. It was yeah about that thirteen, fourteen, something like that. And she yeah. got. I mean, she got nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah, she didn't win, but she got nominated, and that's just amazing. Yeah, and it's a beautiful little kid and turned out to be a beautiful young woman. And she is very, very talented, too, because she is doing another show as well that's on – I believe it's on AMC+. Plus. Do you remember it? Or I, no? I don't. I don't off the top of my head. I'd have to, I'd have to IMDb it and, and 
I actually watched it. I forgot it, and I'm looking it up right now. Okay. Um, yeah, she was in. It's a period piece too. Okay. Um, I have to look up the IMDb's. You know, we all have to use that. That's the perfect way. Sometimes it's not accurate, but you know what? It gives us the important stuff. Yeah. So Dickinson. It's oh, a okay. it's a TV series, and it's Emily Dickinson. Oh. So it's uh basically a modernization of Emily Dickinson's life. Hmm. Very humorous, very um, witty. So and the way she portrays it is very much like she did in Bumblebee. And I feel the same way. That's how she's treating Kate Bischoff, the uh, Bishop, in this particular show. And I think it's perfect the way she does these characters. You know, uh, I I think she's the perfect Kate Bishop for the, the character. Now, mind you, I was never a huge Hawkeye fan. Honestly, when I heard the name Kate Bishop, it was after I would gotten out of comics and people would tell me the story of her. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting... Oh, wow. Well, it's like, wait, Hawkeye's deaf? And they're like, yeah. Oh. And he's training somebody? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. That's cool. And I assume, just like you, because I've forgotten about the character and what my friends had mentioned after I left comics, and I was like, wow. It's not even his daughter. And you would assume, because at the end of Endgame, mm-hmm. that it would be his daughter. But yeah. obviously, you know... But we, we get this quirky 22-year-old girl. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the show. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think it was great casting, and I can't wait to see the, the rest of the series. Yeah. So with that, I, I guess we should just jump right into our top fives. Absolutely. Look, just so you know, I'm not some total noob, right? Um, I know I was a little overwhelmed out there, but I really held my own with those right. same douchebags. Uh, do you want to start off first? Um, um, you know, sure, some, some I can start off. I think we kind of had the same the same one. Just that opening yeah. scene, you, you know, flashing back to 2012. Mm-hmm. And well, it, it, uh, one, of, one of them is, it yeah. was It was great. I, I love the music, the tension as we see this little girl, and she's searching uh, for her parents, the, the, the little girl actress. Uh, I looked up her name last night, but I didn't didn't write it down. Um did a great job of, of that, that tension and, and that being scared. Um, I, I love the perspective we get though, as we see, you know, we see Clint, we see Hawkeye falling down and he's shooting his arrow up. And, you know, we saw that in the Avengers movie, but now we get to see it from the perspective of this little girl standing on the edge of this, you know, this precipice where the wall has been blown out and just the camera angle was just for me, th- that camera angle was just beautiful. When you see her seeing Hawkeye falling down and, and shooting his arrow up and, and then the mom grabbing her and, and rushing yeah. her out, you know, that just, it was a really, really great. T- again, I, we we know that scene really well. We've seen it replayed in a number of different movies. We've seen it replayed um, in in some other situations where they flash back to it. But this is the first time we're seeing this perspective of it of a victim of it. You know, or a victim of the Chitari attack mm-hmm. and seeing that visual of Hawkeye in that per in that particular instance. You know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that's part of that's my number five as well. The fact that we get to see her during that, and the fact that she gets to uh, she loses her father during that attack, mm-hmm. but we get to see the relationship between her, her father, her mother before everything gets destroyed within New York, and her life is turned upside down. Now, mind you, if you look on her, what the way she's looking out towards the city. When everything is happening, she's looking directly towards Avengers Tower. Mm -hmm. And then you see to the left, that's when Hawkeye does his thing. Um, These people are come from wealth, pretty much. They're they're, they're very rich. They're Mm -hmm. very uh, driven. So Kate is well off. And that's how we we start to see it. Um, You know, high rises like that, forget it. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm curious what the rent was like there. (laughs) What? Yeah, yep. but yeah, you know, I really enjoyed the fact that we got that whole introduction to her as a, a little kid, admiring Clint from a distance and seeing him as a hero 
and wanting to be that hero with that, you know, she just excels in all the martial arts, archery, gymnastics, Mm -hmm. Krav Maga, all that good stuff that, you know, and she's got, you know, even her mother says it during the episode saying, it's like, oh, well, we'll have to retire your grade school award. She goes, I love those awards, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she wanted to be what her father stated to her when she was asked as a child by him before the attack about what he would do during a hurricane, which was to protect her, which I think in her mind, she just wants to protect people who, you know, she cares about or protect the world. Sure. So, yeah, Yeah. I'm starting to get that vibe out of it. It's kind of like that Stanley thing. Mm -hmm. You know, with great power comes great responsibility. So Peter has to do that. Something the same way with Kate, where she has to protect those that she loves because someone at one point stated that to her. And that's how she wants to focus that love. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of reciprocal. Yeah. But yeah, it's just me. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, And you're number four. Yeah, my number four is just I love seeing Clint Barton, the family man. I thought this was really it was a really great side that we don't normally see of these heroes. We don't get to see them kind of, you know, just dealing with everyday normal family stuff. You know, they're at that Chinese restaurant, they're having dinner, and he's, you know, going around the table asking, he's they got the wife on the phone, and he's asking each of the kids, well, what do you want to do? And and they they, they list off all the things they want to do. And he's like, Okay, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that. You know, we got so many days and 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 all that and, and then it all gets just kind of blown up because of this this situation with the the ronin suit and with with the girl but just th- that that moment of getting to see him like i said interacting with his kids and then the fact that the, the waiter comes up to them at the end and says that the meal is free and he's mm. he's very you know he's very humble by that he doesn't want to accept it at first but and we see and i think now i'm not sure i know we, we you talked a little bit about this but i think the son is deaf I think he's just hard of hearing. I think Clint has just got hearing aids because she said, dad, did you turn your hearing aid off? And he said, oh, yeah. And then remember he had Kate walking on one side of him because I got I to gotta hear you out of this ear. Yeah. So he can still hear. But he to some have, degree. But, it's yeah. Very, yeah. But, I mean, he didn't have to look. He doesn't have to look people in the face. No, 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 no. I'm not Whereas, saying he's completely deaf. Right, yeah. Like, I, I think, though, the son might be because the son was was communicating. I don't know. It's But you're right. I mean, it's he was signing. The son was signing during yeah. dinner. So there's yeah. definitely there's definitely some some uh, disability there. But I thought that was really great to see. And, again, I, I'm going to talk about it more later on in my notes and probably a little bit in episode two, I think, is just seeing the, the, the non-super-powered yeah a hero that we mm-hmm. that we don't we don't get to see a lot of that i mean he's it's him it's it's well black widow's gone now but uh, um it's you know it's him it's kind of doctor strange i guess but doctor strange has got the magical side of things you know so really we don't you know ant man and the wasp have a suit that they wear they're yeah they're a normal person but then they have a suit that enhances everything so i really just love seeing the the human the human kind of side and sp- particularly the interaction with, with his family and that whole thing with the, with, you know, the boy thinking he's in charge and he you know, <laughs> tells, he tells Lila really, you know, you're the one in charge, you know, and then she gets in the car and he's like, I'm in charge. She's like, you know, that I'm the one in charge. Right. Yeah. It was really great. It was, it was just fun. <laughs> I, I was reminded of that because I spent the whole weekend with this being uh, the, the Monday after or Tuesday after Thanksgiving, I spent the weekend with, with my family. So I got to yeah. have that family uh, interaction. So to, to watch that again, uh, play out on screen was just, it was just really great to see. It's the nitpicking between siblings about their parents or even vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. They're and throwing the, they're throwing the napkins yeah. around the table. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. just, it just, it was just really great to see this family. Cause like, we just really haven't seen that. In, no. I don't think any, you know, we saw a little bit of it with WandaVision maybe, but that was such a comedic, uh, was played for such comedic things that we really didn't get to see a real family interaction. So, Or Endgame at the very beginning before he loses mm-hmm. them. Yeah, yeah, Or exactly. even during Age of Ultron when we were introduced to them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we see a little bit of it, but it just was really good to see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. And uh, with that, uh, my number four, well, well, that would be the, the Barton family Christmas, which mm-hmm. you actually talked about, you know, but without Linda 
Cardellini's mama character. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's only Clint with the kids. And we do see the relationship between Clint and the kids. But why was uh, Linda Cardellini's character? I'm forgetting her name now. But uh, uh, Oh, gosh. It's escaping me now. Exactly, too. right? Um, Eleanor, you're, you're, Eleanor is Kate's mom. So Yes, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll I, just I, say uh, mama. There you go. And uh, so uh, we always hear about him referring to her to as mama. Mm-hmm. Even when he calls her, he calls her mama, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, and Linda Cardellini, yeah, uh, uh, beautiful. But, uh, you know, she plays the perfect character for Clint's wife, I think. And But she's not there. Are they separated? Is he having the kids for the weekend or the week for Thanksgiving? No, the way I understood it, I think, I can't remember specifically what she said. I don't think it was like a separation. I think it was, she had to work or something, or she had to stay back behind. I don't think it was, I don't think they're separated. I think it okay. was, because I'm trying to, she said something about, because remember, he sends the kids back to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, there was yeah. something, I can't remember exactly. I don't think they're separated, though. I think it was, it was something she just wasn't able to accompany them to the city was all it was. Cause remember he does, he does make that statement about that. They're there without her, you know, so in that they're intention, they're not intentionally there without her. They're there. Like he wished she could be there was what he was saying. I'm curious to find out if the reason why she's not there, we find out at the very end of the episode or the season. Mm, Could be really. And it's one of those weird things like, Oh, she's involved with this section or that. Cause we don't know what she does for a living either. Yeah, and like I said, I'd have to rewatch that beginning scene to. Yeah. But there was there was something I didn't get the impression they were separated though. Yeah, well, well basically, you know, I like you, I love the Barton family Christmas and how they talk about the bad shirts, the you know making the gingerbread houses, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Christmas movie marathon, all that cool stuff that families do. But you know, Clint. As we all know, is just still a family man, loves his family and keeps that life away from, you know, his hero life away from his family as much as possible. But, you know, with the Broadway play that he brings the kids to called Rogers, uh, it was such a piece of crap to him that he had to turn off his hearing aid at that point so he could shut everything out. But plus the fact that. Yeah, the facts were all wrong within the actual play itself. So there was no Ant Man during that Chitari attack. <laughs> he goes, Yeah, that guy wasn't there, <laughs> you know. And then which was a nod to Endgame when Paul Rudd mentions uh during that scene with Hulk and the kids want the selfie. He goes, Oh, come on, take a picture. He goes, Yeah, I was Ant Man. They're like, Who the hell are you? <laughs> and pretty much the same kids that we do see within Hawkeye too, because I believe um, I forget who is it that the the um, did End Game and Civil War, uh, the directors. I'm forgetting they were brothers. Oh but yeah, yeah, the Russo brothers. The Russos. Uh, so one of the Russos brothers, they had his son, the nephew, his niece, whatever. Mm. Uh, both of them, between all of them, they had their children in there. Oh, cool. So those kids are actually within Hawkeye, from my understanding. Mm. So check that out. But um, yeah, it, the fact that he, you know. That there was a little segue to Endgame with that, with uh, Ant Man, and that's our good reference or Easter egg towards that. Plus, uh, you know, the fact that you could see how Clint was anytime you saw Nat on the stage or the version of Nat, he was getting a little bit teary eyed too, because mm-hmm. it's a nod towards the Black Widow, yeah, and and everything that was going on with that. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and I love too that there's a there's a there's a, a phone conversation. It's either in this episode or the second episode. I can't remember uh, where even the wife, his wife, acknowledges his relationship with Cat and, and mm-hmm. with uh, with uh, Nat with uh, the Black Widow because she says something about oh yeah he, it's in it's in the second episode when he said when she says what are you going to do and he says I'm going to do catch and release and uh, and she says oh that's Nat's move or something like that and I really I really like the fact that 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 relationship between Clint. And Black Widow was never romantic. It was always a brothers in arms. It was always a that that is that that kind of relationship. It wasn't romantic. It was it was a mission oriented. And the wife recognized that. And she didn't. She had the the impression I got from those conversations. There was no jealousy towards no. Uh, no. towards Nat or anything like that. She always yeah. recognized that that was 
they were they were brothers in arms, brothers and sisters in arms. So. They were basically family. Mm -hmm. That that's literally what it was. Yeah, and that was uh, I think the biggest thing I always appreciated within the MCU between Hawkeye and Black Widow. Mm -hmm. I really appreciated that because it showed respect to friends who are you know they're opposite sexes and they mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be romantic. Right. It's yeah. just like like respect, understanding, and love and friendship. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. So my number three is I, I kind of understand it now. When I initially wrote my number three after watching just episode one a couple of times, I was a little confused about the Armands. Uh, but I but episode two kind of clears up that Armand the third is Jack's uncle, or was Jack's uncle because he dies yep. at the end of this this episode. Um, but apparently he's some sort of either criminal figure or he's got because you know he has that argument with with. Kate's mother. Eleanor, and, yeah. Yeah, and he's he's like, and Kate's like, well, is he threatening you? And even Eleanor's like, I don't know what he's doing. But I'm, I think there's more there. And I'm, obviously that's going to be revealed throughout the the season, throughout the the, the the series that I thought was really, really great. I, I love that the, when they sneak off to that auction, you kind of see them at odds with each other. And they're both bidding on that, the sword. But eventually Armand wins it but then of course jack takes it in the confusion of the explosion so that's why you know obviously there's this suspicion at the end uh did he did he kill uncle armand i don't know <laughs> obviously we'll talk more about it in episode two because it comes into play in episode two but uh, yeah the whole the, i'm sure we're going to learn more about jack and what his ties yeah. were to this this kind of black market auction that was going on during uh, Eleanor's fundraiser. Yeah, uh, that would be my number three as well, too. You know, mm. it's basically Eleanor, the fiance, Jack, Armand, the <laughs> third. Uh, we talk about Armand, the seventh, I think, at that <laughs> point. Too. Yeah, the little yeah. kid. Yep. Uh, these people are obviously uh, from wealth, including Kate. I already mentioned it because mm -hmm. basically it looks like Eleanor marries into wealth and she herself is either a false wealth, which I think, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, we just stated his name. Uh, Armand uh -huh. calls her out on. Like right. basically it's all about the money and then she uh, he sees her ruse and she's trying to marry into it basically taking his money but also his son himself uh, or his nephew i should say mm -hmm. armand's nephew jack that eleanor is uh engaged to yeah it, it seems like he's money hungry himself and wants the same things that his uncle wants if not all of his uncle's wealth which to me shows that he might be into uh illegal things and Hence why we got that whole uh, abruption during the auction. Maybe it was something that he released to the, uh, what was it? Uh, what do we call those? The tracksuit mafia. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the, the Russian mafia, that's the tracksuits. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, bro. Um, <laughs> but that's episode two. We'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying but but yeah. that we, we find that out later on, but we do see it within – this yeah, episode there's definitely more to this family dynamic than we've because you know that's the whole thing at the very beginning of the episode they're they're uh, she and the husband who passes away they're arguing about money and they're saying we may have to sell the penthouse and then you know we don't know what kind of life insurance the father had we don't know what kind of insurance they had on that penthouse who knows it's uh so yeah it's all speculation but uh, but yeah there's definitely money there's a lot of money involved here uh, but my number two is kind of I want to talk about Kate for a little bit, and you've already touched on a little bit of her, you know, her ambition, and we're going to learn even more about her ambition in okay. in episode two. But you know, I love that whole fight scene there in the wine cellar where she's she's kicking bottles up into the air, she's using um, the the wine bottles as weapons, and she chases the the, the dog. You know, it's all it was just really great, um, but just Kate is a there's a lot of complexity to her character she's you know she makes that comment about uh what she did what you know he asked what you did in the suit that's in episode two but she says something oh just a little light b and e you know and uh we see her try to pick a lock and when she can't pick the lock she rock climbs up the wall to get into 
uh, Armand's location where she's tracked his phone using her mom's security company app. And just all these things about her that, that yeah, she's 22, but she knows a lot, you know, and she's definitely been like, she tells um, Hawkeye, I'm not a noob, you know? So I just, I just thought that this character of Kate is going to be very complex. And I'm looking forward to finding out more and more about her. Yeah. She's very much self-aware of what she's capable of doing. And I just love how Hawkeye turns around. It's like Clint's like, Oh, you you think you're one of the top, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mind you, he is one of the top. <laughs> about it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really do enjoy that. Uh, the dynamic of Kate Bishop is very, very much interesting to me. I want to see more of her. I'm hoping that's for the new Avengers. And I'm wondering if we'll see uh, a Black Widow alumni within this series. Mm-hmm. With Florence Pugh, and uh, I'm I'm speculating, mm-hmm. but we we get some really cool things at the very end of uh, episode two, but we won't go into that until we get to that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number two for this particular episode, well, I love how Kate is so quick, and to get herself out of trouble, uh, she was already dressed up wrong for the party, pretty much going against what her mother wanted with her dress. Uh, or not wearing the dress and going in and as a tux, which kind of debunks a bunch of things too, because it's like it's kind of assumed, and then people see you dressed like that, and they're gonna say, "Oh, you're a you're a waiter," but you know, you know she's a kid who rebels, so mm-hmm. I, I kind of took that as that's gonna happen, but um. you know, but it worked out, and since so she looked like a, a server, you know. So uh, I think her quick wit and fast thinking gets her into trouble as well as getting her out of trouble at times, Mm -hmm. as well as her ability to take care of herself. Yeah. Yeah. I had this in my notes because I thought it it was, especially uh, particularly on the second watch when I, I speculated that are we supposed to assume that she dressed like a server? Cause I mean, she's, dressed exactly like the servers at the party. So I, I can't think that that's by accident, that she purposely dressed that way. And she knew the guy, Gary, she knew the, the head, whatever his name was, Gary. And so I, I, I think, like you're saying, I think she did it all on purpose just to, to get rid of that stereotype of she's the rich girl who I'm not, I'm not going to act like I'm the rich girl. Yeah, I don't think thing. it was uh, intentional to – Say, hey, I'm going to look up this whole place and see if they're dressed like this. No. Okay. I think it was a, a basic uh, suit that she just grabbed. Probably her father's suit. And no, that was a woman's to- suit. That, that was, oh, it was? But, but, I mean, look, that's what I'm saying is 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 I, I wonder if we're going to find out. Now, obviously, we probably won't find out. But it, it just seems that she was dressed too specifically exactly like. Huh. Those okay. servers. I mean, it was the same color. It was the same, you know, cut and everything. It wasn't just a. It wasn't just a a. So, you know, it's well, like maybe- based upon the scene, it it didn't look to me honestly that she was expecting to see an underground auction. That's what I'm saying. Is with- it's, it's it was a little confusing to me because yeah. she's yeah. she's dressed this way. Like it's too specific to be accidental, but maybe it was. I don't know. And and maybe you're right. Maybe she was just quick enough to pick up on pretending to be a server, going down there. I and then casually using the name Gary and it's right. Like, uh, yeah, Gary. And maybe it's coincidentally, like, wow. she just yeah. It, it's it it all seems if it's if it's coincidental, then then yes, she's crazy good at at thinking on her feet. Um, but if it was if she did it on purpose, then we have to ask well. Why? Where's and, the backstory and where? Right. Can Why we did see she this? do this? You know? So yeah, yeah. So so it where's was the little... side panel that we have to go to another comic to actually see this? Right. Yeah. That. So yeah, that know? was a little little bit confusing for me. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, leads us to my number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really, we're going to talk. <laughs> we, we've already been talking about episode two as we're here in episode one. So there's so many things that are set up there. Uh, the only thing that kind of confused me a little bit was. How did Hawkeye find them at the end there? I, I'm not sure. It's It just seemed like he's out of the blue. He just drops out of the blue to rescue her, you know, right there in the street. 
And I wasn't sure how, if he just figured they were close enough, they were maybe, they, maybe they were still close enough to where the explosion happened that he, he figured out where they were. But I, I did love that, that perspective of her seeing, like, we don't see the fight directly. We see the fight from her perspective inside mm-hmm. the car through yeah. the windshield. I thought that was really, really cool. And then of course, just like everybody else, she recognizes him as Hawkeye at the end. And he's, well, the, the way that was filmed reminded me of Batman. Okay. Yeah, you know, because you don't see him at all. Mm-hmm. It's like a fictitious person. Or yeah. maybe even uh, Marvel's version of Batman, Moon Knight, mm-hmm. that we're going to be getting soon. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's very much uh, a very m- mystical mm-hmm. in a sense. And we don't really see that until we get to the alley and when he exposes himself and, and then yeah. Chief freaks out, obviously. Yeah. But I, I thought that was a really cool element. So what's your number one? Well, that would be, well, the overall that I love the beginning of the episode uh, mm-hmm. until the end. You know, from begin to end, it worked out. But at least I love the idea that we actually flow into the second episode. We mm-hmm. actually get to watch that second episode. Uh, we're not left off with a cliffhanger going, what the hell is going to happen? What, what, what are we going to go see next? Yeah. So I'm just glad that they uh, they made the premiere two episodes instead of just one. Mm-hmm. And I think we are waiting for so much more so that, you know, we have to do this all the time, you know. Because we got movies that are going to be coming out that are going to be so amazing. And sorry, listeners, if I sound kind of like you can see. I'm a little bit sick still. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I think they're trying to give us something to uh, to bite into. Yeah. And what? how many episodes do we have? This is six. two. It's only six. Yeah. Only six this episodes. This is quick. This is going to be quick. This is very a quick episode. So, uh, all right. Uh, thoughts on the very end episode. What do you think it will be? See, this is where I'm a little confused and, and, and more about it. Just do a prediction. Because I just don't know because we don't know where this fits in the timeline. So if this is going to be – if these six episodes are really not going to play into the bigger Marvel picture, mm-hmm. I think we're going to get Florence Pugh. I think for sure she's coming back. I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. I, I, I well, I, I think it has been confirmed that she's in the series. I don't know how big of a role she's going to play. Okay. So, you know, I hope part of me hopes that the end of this either rolls into what you've talked about, like the Thunderbolts or the new Avengers, Avengers or the young Avengers, or yeah. even like I said, Florence Pugh is going to be involved. And again, this is not a spoiler because. We've seen her at the end of episode two, and Disney has already announced that there's going to be an Echo series. So is Echo going to play into the end of the – I really – I would love to see this bring us into a new phase, really usher us into phase four, or we're already in phase four. but We're in phase four. Probably usher us into phase five. Maybe. I just – I don't – like I said, I I don't – not knowing – not knowing – where this fits in the timeline, because this could just be a bubble, you know, yeah, cont- yeah, self-contained series, self-contained series that's not going to connect. This oh, like gonna- Netflix too. Think of the Netflix series that we right. covered. It's just going to connect. Jessica Jones, right. Daredevil, right. Punisher. That's what I'm saying is, is maybe it's just going to like peripherally connect to the MCU, and that it's going to introduce us to these bigger characters. It's going to introduce us to Echo. It's going to introduce us to what Florence Pugh's White Widow or whatever she's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Moving moving forward. That's what I, I, I that's what I expect to see at the end of this is I don't expect to see like Hawkeye coming out of retirement permanently. Me neither. I see this ushering us into these new characters and seeing where they're going to fit into. And that may include, it may include a passing of the mantle, so to speak, of, mm-hmm. of Hawkeye to Kate Bishop. I don't know if yep. she has an actual like hero name in the comics. If she does not something, aware but, of it myself. Um, so th- I think that's what I, that's what I'd like to see. If you really want me to, to say, that's what I'd like to see at the end of this is for this to be kind of a self-contained kind of like what Falcon and the winter soldier were, mm-hmm. that it was kind of a self-contained story, but mm-hmm. it, it, but it's introducing us to these 
bigger pieces. Like it, we yeah, got the new yeah. Captain America. We've got uh, the um, what what was uh, what was dude's name at the end that uh, um, the, not the Patriot. What is he called? The, the oh, I know um, what you're talking about. Uh, anyway, you know that's Kurt what Russell's that's, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I see happening here. I think this. I think these six episodes where we may not get a season two as much as it that'd be cool because, but the Hawkeye character has really he's kind of you know played his out. He's kind of yeah. been played out. Um, yep. So I would I see this series kind of wrapping up uh, mm-hmm. his character into retirement and 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 introducing us to these new characters that are going to be the future of the MCU. Yeah. I feel the same way, and I think with, uh, like you stated before, with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, we got, at the very end, we got, Mm -hmm. uh, who was it? Was Captain something? U.S. Agent, that's it, U.S. Agent. Agent That's it, yeah. Yeah, there you go, U.S. Agent. We got U.S. Agent, Uh, we already know at the very end of Black Widow, we got Florence Pugh as the new White Widow, whatever Mm -hmm. you want to call her. Mm-hmm. Maybe at the very end of this, at maybe they are more focusing in on a new Avengers. And I'm thinking at the very end of this, it, it ends where Clint resolves all the stuff between Kate Bishop and everybody else, whether it be the uh, tracksuit mafia or uh, Echo, or maybe I, I dare I not say it because Echo is associated with Daredevil, uh, mm-hmm. the hand. Yeah. Or whoever is in charge, or maybe our introduction to again, Mister Fisk himself, and uh, deal with Daredevil. I, I don't think they're going to introduce Daredevil, but they're giving us characters, and I mm-hmm. Echo is a big, huge one. We'll which we'll talk about later. But I, I'm really interesting in into seeing a, this actual season ends, and then we see Kate being brought into. His family, the Barton family, okay, as his own. Hmm. I, I have a funny feeling that I I, I love Vera Farmiga, but I hate I would hate to see the the character killed off. But I have a funny feeling that she might die, mm-hmm. and then Clint might adopt or take in Kate as hmm. his own family. Interesting. And we might see that, yeah. but that's just my predictions. Those are my thoughts. Not anything that I've read online. <laughs> Uh, these are things that I would love to see mm-hmm. if they could actually do that. And that way, Kate would actually have a, a part of being the new Avengers, as it were, with, let's say, Lawrence Pugh's White Widow, uh, let's say, uh, well, maybe even with uh, the new Captain America, you know, who is, mm-hmm. you know, Falcon. And then with Winter Soldier and have them all a little bit within that group and being a little bit younger and that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And if they do that, that would be amazing. If not, if they just integrate it into the regular Avengers, that would be awesome. Yeah. But the, the I, I've kind of digressed and we went off the rails like a crazy <laughs> train, but uh, let, let's move on to other things like notes. Uh, I loved, I love that they resolved the whole bell clock tower incident with just a quick line. From Kate's mom, <laughs> Kate's mom saying that she's got to pay for it. You know, she's yeah. got to pay to replace an irreplaceable clock tower or bell tower. And and Kate's like, well, it was a clock tower. And she's like, well, it was a clock tower that had a bell in it or a bell tower that had a clock in it or, or whatever. But I love yeah. that they resolved that because, you know, we see the, the the guys burst into her at the top of the that whatever she the roof of that building she's on. And then nothing. And then the next thing we see, she's walking into her mom's house you know and i'm like wait a minute what happened here so i was really glad they gave us that resolution of that line of that yeah. mom's got to pay for it yeah yeah rich people problems mm-hmm. <laughs> as i say uh i really no- want to know what the conversation was about with uh, armand and eleanor before kate interrupted her in the hallway and mm-hmm. intercepted her and overhearing something what was really what was that really about i really want to know yeah i'm hoping that we get to see that soon yeah, I love that callback too. To she was, you know, as a little kid, she's eavesdropping on her mom and dad arguing, and now she's kind of eavesdropping on Eleanor and Armand arguing. So we kind of see she's kept that kind of kept that up. So um, let's see uh, the tracksuit mafia. I wanted. To, are we supposed to know who these guys are? Have we? Have they been? Are they obviously they must be some sort of comic book reference? 
but they we've are, not, we've but not I, seen they're them, very small, <laughs> and we've not seen them in the MCU. Nope. Right. And what was this watch they were trying? To, did you know? Did you understand? I that have whole? no clue. Okay. I, I haven't watched any YouTubes or anything to figure out what's going on with this I, watch. The only thing I could think of it might be a Tony Stark watch during the Chitari attack. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean all. that's the only thing I could figure as well is that it had to have something. It, obviously, it came from the Avengers, so it has to have some sort of special value. Yep. And I didn't catch whether the dog had it or the guy. I guess the guy still had it at the end when Kate rescued the dog. That was a little confusing, and they never brought the watch up again. So I I, I don't know if they're going to bring it up again. If it, we're just going to be left uh, dangling about this watch, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anything else for you? <laughs> Uh, for me, well, uh, we have already mentioned it to the humanizing of Clint. Mm-hmm. You know, we already mentioned that he's not a super powered person or hero like Captain America, Thor, or Hulk. Mm-hmm. But you know, there is no you know Black Widow or Natalie at this point or Tony Stark who is under a suit, just like him. You know, he's just you know they're all normal people. Mm-hmm. But you know, sometimes battles take their toll on the human body, and you know, in, in this case. We get a deaf or somebody who is losing their hearing, mm-hmm. and uh, we see it more so in the second episode. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For where sure. we see the the how it takes a toll on him with all the battles and everything, and his eardrums uh, explode basically. So he, it in the comics, he is definitely deaf. In this case, the, it, he's basically hearing impaired. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think that's pretty cool because it humanizes the character and. Very much like how it humanizes him, too, with uh, his family. Mm-hmm. Because everything is based upon his family, and he loves his family. He wants to protect his family. But he still holds to the guilt of being Ronin within this. And uh, I'm just loving the whole Clint aspect about this. Um, you know, he has to show a little bit of humility of who he was and what he did. Right. Uh, as well as being a hero, too. And... Uh, you know, his kind of joking things, you know, because I think we get things in the next few uh, episodes that blows uh, Kate Bishop's sh- socks off a little bit, too. But uh, yeah, something that I was wrong about that I'm going to mention now, uh, we spoke about it before during uh, the Logan movie review that we covered years ago. Uh, how long ago was that? Was that two years ago? It's been a while. Yeah. So in the comics, Clint does lose his hearing so his eardrums do explode but with ollie with ollie uh he who is green arrow in the dc universe he loses his arm but we actually referenced that when we covered uh what if Mm -hmm. a few months back uh what was it like a month or two ago yeah whenever what if i remember because he was missing his missing an arm in the what if episode yeah yep and we got the whole cyberdyne reference and everything else Mm -hmm. which was pretty much almost like a nod to to DC at that point, which is pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cool. So if you haven't watched what if on Disney plus, we do suggest it. And we suggest after you started watching it, listen to the podcast for after every episode to hear our thoughts on it and please do submit any thoughts and theories. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I've just got a couple of quotes here. Uh, I thought it was, it was kind of interesting at the beginning when they're watching the musical that uh, Clint says something about this whole thing is a bit ridiculous. And Lila's like, it's a lot ridiculous. So I thought that was great. Um, and then, of course, the the quote from Eleanor would, after talking about the clock tower, where she tells Kate that she says, rich people and young people always think they are invincible. And you have always been both. Take it from me. You're not. So. Uh, yeah, kind of sad, but at the same time, a, a good uh, uh, to show us kind of that family dynamic between, you know, it was it was kind of interesting to see that that uh, the difference in the dynamic between Kate and her mom and Clint and his kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with her mom, it's tough love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, even though she's rich, but with uh, Clint, he just loves his kids and wants to do everything for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last one would be, uh, why do I have a sneaking suspicion that Jack is the bad guy and is involved <laughs> with the hand from Daredevil? Or some big, huge crime boss in New York City, maybe Kingpin? Mm. We'll you see. Know, mm-hmm. I- I'm getting those vibes. 
because I, I'm thinking this is secondary. I think they're we're getting misdirected in some way. So if you listeners out there have any clues or ideas or thoughts or crazy thoughts like I do about the show, let us know. We all, we're going to be posting something for uh, episode three. So as soon as that comes up, please put your comments in the Facebook comments below section. When we Absolutely. put that image up and then uh, send us up uh, an email if you have thoughts too. All right. Well, uh, there are a bunch of quotes. Uh, that's the, I already had mine. I, I didn't realize you had one more note. So those are all the quotes that I had. Do you have some quotes from this one? Uh, not really. No. Okay. I guess we're moving on to episode two, which yep. is entitled Hide and Seek. Wait a minute. Aren't you Hawkeye? Look, I'm not trying to cause a scene here, all right? Out of respect, whoever the hell this is, but I'm plumb out of patience. So you got two choices, you understand? I could take this, pretend sword, and you pretend to die, and I take that suit. Or I'm gonna real punch you. And why don't you tell us what the synopsis was for this one? Right? And I'm gonna take that suit. Well, the synopsis for this one was Clint has to help Just Kate kill disentangle me. herself the from the tracksuit mafia and a real life murder no. mystery. Come on. So basically a um, Marvel superheroes version of Clue. <laughs> well, and, you know, on the second watch uh, of the second episode, I don't – I'm trying to think – I don't know if the newscaster – that they, they implied that the Ronin had something to do with the explosion and at the, at the, the, the hotel. But I don't think they, anybody saw her – at Armand's so but she's you know she at the end of this episode she says something like that she has clues and so I think she's I really think she definitely suspects that Jack killed his uncle Armand with that sword that he took from uh from the auction the auction house for sure she uh she suspects that so we'll have to see in the next episode kind of if she's able to lay out for Clint what her ideas are but that's really this second episode you know there was a whole lot packed into it especially on the second watch oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that i realized that how much it's setting up for the future and and like we just talked about we only have four episodes left yeah this is I mean, this is going to go quick. quick we're talking christmas yeah. we're going to be at christmas by we this may be finishing up christmas week maybe or around that area i wouldn't be surprised well mm -hmm. think about it um how many days does uh clint have he says five, so that makes five. it makes sense that we're we're going to get a day for each, basically a day for each episode is what yep. it seems like. Like the movie or uh, TV show Twenty Four Hours with Kiefer Sutherland. So, <laughs> I, I think we're we're probably working upon that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, overall, I thought I thought it was a great continuation of the first episode, and I love Clinton Kate's witty banter within the episode itself too. Yeah, because they they kind of play off each other really perfectly well and you know this is a uh i'm not gonna say friendship it's more of family destined because I, I have a really funny feeling that kate at the very end of this episode is gonna have no family and possibly yeah and the fact that clint's gonna take her into his own fold even mm -hmm. though he's training her even though he doesn't want to be training her <laughs> it's one of those things you kind of forced into Kind of like a lost dog that you take in, like Kate did. Mm -hmm. Think of that and reference mm -hmm. that later at the end of the season once we get to that point. Uh, a one-eyed dog at that point, too, which would be, what, a Hawkeye? Um, <laughs> also, it really was a, a good, uh, you know, to me, there was a huge Marvel Comics Easter egg at the end. Mm -hmm. of the episode that we'll cover so i'm gonna leave that right there but i, I really think that between all this it, it it's as if clint found a young natasha that was a lot like him and his skills hmm. and now he's gonna have to train her so literally that's where i'm gonna leave it off there okay okay yeah i yeah very good so we should get into our top fives for this one? Oh, definitely
Like, just so you know, I'm not some total noob, right? Um, I know I was a little overwhelmed back there, but I really held my own with those. I guess I'll start yeah, because you right started um, first you know, some, time. Some people Absolutely, have actually yeah. told me the world's greatest right, torture. Cool. So, my number five, well, that would be Clint's ability to be humanized well, uh, within of, the show. Is, he yes. wants everyone he encounters yeah. that is starstruck to see him as a person. He understands fame, but can't really deal with it because of him being private all the time. Kind of like with the guy at the uh, the Broadway play. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about it, he uh, he, he was like, he, the guy's there, and there he's at the urinal. He's like, uh, a selfie? And I was like... Oh my god, it's not the time, not the time. He just can't really see himself as famous. He just does what he does. And I'm like I'm I'm starting to think is this a Riggs and Murtaugh kind of like collaboration whereas uh Riggs would take in all the glory like Kate and whereas uh Murtaugh would be Clint and he doesn't really want the fame. He just wants to do his job, or if not, get home because he's, I'm getting too old for this kind of stuff. As you and I both mentioned on the Lethal Weapon conversation when we did on Adrenaline Cinema podcast, but to me, it sounds to me like he he just wants to do what he needs to do to get back to his family, Mm -hmm. and he has a problem with fame. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, And this is kind of what my number five is as well. I, I love... The fact that what we we see here that you know even though when people recognize him like you said he he tries to kind of downplay who he is and they have that he and Kate have that whole conversation about his branding and he's like well you don't understand I'm not branding anything and she's like well you know by not branding you're branding kind of thing but <laughs> the other thing I liked in this episode is it really spotlighted uh, the uh, the kind of s- heroes that are not super. You know, he goes to the he goes to the whole LARP event, and I, I love. And I'll talk some more about the LARP event later. But I love that he goes to that LARP event, and he he, it's it's almost the exact opposite of what he normally does. That he kind of wants to just buck the system and kind of use his fame to just well, I, I I should be able to just walk in there. And the woman stops him, and she says, "I, I just love <laughs> that whole interaction where she says, look, I know who you are, but these people here, most of them are cops and firemen, so.'" It, basically, what she's saying is they're just as much heroes as you are, and you mm-hmm. deserve to give them the respect of, yep. you know, playing by their rules. And yep. I love how he how he kind of deflates at the moment. He he kind of realizes, okay, well, so tell me what the rules are, and so and then he he decides to follow. I just love that about that. It was that he, a respect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just love that that the show is acknowledging that fact that that just because. You know, he's he's a big superhero, but these guys in here, they're the same way. You need to give them the same respect that they're mm-hmm. going to show you. And I'll talk some more about that later when we talk about that yeah. because we we see something that could have been disrespectful turn into this like super amazing scene of respect mm-hmm. between two men that I, I just I thought was really another, another scene that I really, really loved in this episode. Oh. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, so that's that's really I just like the fact that the show acknowledges that. And yeah. that the character acknowledges that the writers acknowledge how important the heroes that are not super are. Yeah. And my number four, mm-hmm. I just love all the looks of New York City within the episode. Mm. Between the fire scene at Kate's apartment, then to the streets of New York, just places I've seen and have been to. Mm-hmm. The fact that lo- those location shots are real. Then, of course, the scene within Central Park. For the LARPing event. I, I really enjoyed that. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so my number four, again, is just I'm going to talk some more about the family dynamic. I, I kind of touched on it already in the in the first episode. We have the, the scene at the Chinese restaurant. In this episode, we have the scene where the kids are back at the house and they're building the they're doing the gingerbread houses. And he's talking to his wife on the phone. And again, I didn't write her name down, so I don't know the character's name. Um, but it just was really, really cool again, to see that, that, that even though he tells his kids, no, it's not about the ninja thing, but his wife recognized that because his wife knows is, you know, I'm assuming no one else knows that he was the Ronin, but his wife does. She knows that he was the Ronin. She knows what he's going through, what guilt he carries because of that and that I, so i really really love that those those just those subtle moments of like i said when she's on the phone with him and you can see the kids in the background they're laughing and they're building the gingerbread houses and and you could just when you see him 
hearing that in the background, you can just see his heart sink because he promised them he'll be home for Christmas. And I did check the calendar. the The next four episodes, the last episode will premiere will will drop the twenty second, which is the the Wednesday before Christmas. So wow. I, I, that's going to be really really cool for the show to wrap up right around uh, Christmas time. Um, but yeah, just a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sure, like I said, he promises that he's going to be home for Christmas. And I'm sure that's kind of foreshadowing the end of of the series. And I, I just, yeah, that's yeah. I just love that that uh, that fact that uh, he's calling home and checking in. And yeah, uh, well, he's still a family man, so and yeah. he loves his wife. So uh, mm-hmm. that's that's the coolest part. And the fact that he shows respect to the uh, the police and the fire department and EMS and all that. All our yeah. essential workers to that are out there too during those times of need. That would lead me to my number three, mm-hmm. which would be the firefighter that stole the Ronin outfit. Yeah, Grills. Yep, Grills. Uh, I think this character will be involved within the show at a late at a later point. I'm hoping to see him more and more, and I'm hoping he becomes Clint's friend because at the very end you do get that respect because Clint tells him he goes, "Call me Clint." He goes, oh, Clint, oh, my name is Grills. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, th- and nice to meet you, Grills. <laughs> I love you kind of thing, and he just walks off. And that was that whole thing, too, in the very beginning. It's like, uh, I, I, we didn't mention it, but I think TV Podcast Industries ma- mentioned it in their podcast about how, you know, nobody says I love you that much. And I, I think Clint actually makes a comment within this episode to Kate regarding, oh, we're just flinging that around, but... He always says it to his kids and his wife anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so funny. But, uh, yeah, Clint really likes uh, Grills at mm-hmm. this point enough to ask him, you know, to call him by his name. And I just love that scene within a LARP. Yeah. So uh, he has to relinquish and fail before everyone. And the one thing that I loved in a quote, and it's the only quote that I should really be saying is, I fought Thanos. <laughs> yeah, kept that saying was, that, that was great. I, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, that was my number three as well. Was the fight, and I put that in, in quotes. The fight in the in the LARPing thing, where that's kind of slow mo, where he's you just see him just trucking guys, just yep. just you know throwing people out of his way. He's using his sword, but he's doing it in that kind of play acting way. Yeah, and you can see that everybody's like this exaggerated uh, kind of thing. And I'm throwing my arms up in the air now, even though people can see me. Um, um, uh, as because it, it was just super cool to see him, and and I love how Grills even acknowledges there. You know, he's like, "You had a little bit of fun, didn't you?" Uh, and you know, even Hawkeye's got. He doesn't admit to having fun, but he does say, "I'm glad I did it," which I thought was a, a kind of a cool way of acknowledging that. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a bad thing. And I was really, I was, I was a little worried for a second. When mm-hmm. the whole trial, the the whole you know trial by combat kind of oh, thing, oh, you thought Gr- Grills was going to back out and yeah, that he might yeah. not. Well, no, I defeated yeah. you. I don't have to give up the suit. But it was really yeah. great. Again, we talked about that mutual respect they had because that's you know he tells him he says just let me kill you and I'll give you the suit and and that's what he does there at the end. He says yeah. here's here it is, man. But I love how he talks about how he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna live on this story. You know, for however long he's going to be able to tell people, <laughs> I killed Hawkeye. And, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, it's, it's it's really, really great. And, uh, and like you said, I, I just loved hearing his excitement of Clint telling him to call him by his first name and yeah. the little fist bump they give each other. And so and he does say you're, you're, you're correct because he does say I owe you one. So I, I I'm not I will not be surprised if something happens in the amazing. last episode or something that that he needs to call upon this firefighter uh, for something Just to I, help I, out. Yeah. Yeah. I really I'm looking forward to that, too, because it's one of those things. It's like, oh, that's foreshadowed. Yeah. Got to watch yeah. for it, man. And that <laughs> character is cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are we on to? You're number two. My number two. OK. Uh-huh. All right, that, that would be uh, Kate's steps to learning to be like Hawkeye. Clint helps her with their bandage to teach her how to take care of herself, mm-hmm. like with like a uh, a butterfly uh, bandage, mm-hmm. as it were, because I've had those as a kid. Mm-hmm. Had them on my finger, which I have a huge scar for, by the way. So I almost lost my finger at age <laughs> twelve, I believe. That was not fun. Um, but uh, he teaches her how to stitch herself up properly. Uh, plus he, him telling how to, you know, staying off the scent of other people, like, uh, trying to get away from them. But obviously he doesn't teach her well enough where she listens. <laughs> so, uh, 
I really enjoyed that. Plus, uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm loving the one eye dog still. I love that dog. And all she does is call it dog. Yeah. And apparently, pizza it dog. loves pizza. Pizza dog. Yeah. Pizza dog. No, she, yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. title of nobility. <laughs> yeah. Like the Earl of Sandwich. I thought it was great. And um, then she knows how to do two things at the same time, you know, lower the swelling in her eye and, you know, thaw out the dog's pizza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really, really great. You know, for me, my number two is it was a subtle thing, but it was something, again, that we don't see a lot of. I think we saw some of it. You mentioned the Netflix series is. Um, we saw some of it, it like in Jessica Jones, but seeing the the kind of police involvement in in what's going on, you know, the the, the police yeah. uh, the police officer calls up Kate and says, "Kate, can you come down to the station? We've got some questions about your mm-hmm. apartment that burned down." And I, I thought it was really great because again, it's one of those things that we don't see a lot of that level of character in uh, in these shows. A lot of times, they don't they don't bother to show us that side of the story, you know, where mm-hmm. we know there's got to be an arson investigation going on about her apartment. Oh, you yeah. Know, there's, there's <laughs> got to be, you know, all this stuff. Has, there's somebody is investigating the death of Armand, of uncle Armand, you know? So I, I just, I just love that, that again, it's one of those things that I think this series in particular is embracing and is showing us those non super heroes that are out yeah. in the world. Yeah, I feel the same way too. It kind of makes me think of like um, damage control for mm-hmm. Marvel too. Uh, the people who clean up all the messes, and we brought this up before with the uh, DC universe. They actually had something that was like this. Uh, I'm forgetting the name of the show, but they had it not too long ago, where mm-hmm. basically, uh, and there was a comic for Marvel and DC where they would clean up all the messes of all the. Uh, The superheroes. Yeah. But in this case, you do see the reality of the police getting involved, exactly what you stated, uh, especially with her house being burned. The consequences that are required within real life that are now going to be implemented within this this universe, it's kind of reflective on the real world, but it's being – it's giving it more of a realistic – view you know mm-hmm. within this uh this actual universe yeah very cool yeah uh so your number one my number one that would be the ending scene and i thought it was amazing uh, i love that we have a new character i don't think this is our big bad at all i think this is someone that will come into play within the cinematic universe at a later date and that character's name is echo mm-hmm and which we know from the Marvel comics in Daredevil, the Daredevil series, which we covered here from the Netflix series too. We we covered what season three, I think. Yeah, we we didn't cover two or one, did we? I, I can't remember. It's been I, so long. It's been four years. I Jeez. know it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, we did cover Nef- yeah the Netflix yeah. series Daredevil at one point. So uh, Echo's real name is Maya Lopez, and she is credited in IMDb with the actress that's there for the show. So she is similar to Matt Murdock in the sense that she lost her sense of hearing. So this is the character traits. So she lost her sense of hearing and was trained to mimic and be like everyone else within visual stimulation. So she could accurately echo... Uh, a maneuver or act and be able to do that every time. Very mm-hmm. similar to Taskmaster that we've seen in Black Widow. Okay. And uh, that's her way of doing it because obviously if you lose a sense, you gain a sense. So with her, she was able to work out her body to the point where she could actually do these maneuvers mm-hmm. exactly like anybody else. Very much like the Taskmaster, like I said before. So she learned to move like the person that she's looking at, uh, the fighting style or walk mannerism or anything with a glance. And she is fast and effective. And basically in the comics, she was the first version of Ronin, which the character was created by Jim Mack and John Quesada back in 1999 for the Daredevil run. So... Uh, the character is to be associated with a hand, if you remember the hand, and Daredevil. So um, that's a, that's a what was it? It was an Asian group in Japan, 
and uh, Daredevil had a face-off with him on the third season. Mm-hmm. By that end, I think we got Elektra, if my memory yep. is good. So, uh, basically, I'm hoping that we get Elektra eventually, which sways us into Daredevil. So, I'm hoping that we get, you know, Charlie Cox back in the fold, big time. That would be a we'll big see. thing. Yeah. And she was also associated with the Hydra, within Hydra at the time, within comics. Whether or not they do that within the series or the MCU, I don't know. I'm just glad that we get another character in this. And it will be something that links us to the new Daredevil that we're going to get through um, Disney Plus when it comes out. So, uh, what are your thoughts? So, what are you hoping for, uh, Steve? Are, are you looking uh, forward I mean, to like a, a like hand? You- I don't, I have no, you, everything you've just said is all pure speculation because I have no idea. We don't know what the character's relationship, this Echo's character's relationship is with this tracksuit mafia. They, you know, the comics, maybe the, the, the show may be going in a completely oh, different well, it's direction. adaptive, yeah. You know, what I'm saying is because we have yeah. this, we have this Echo character being in control of the tracksuit mafia. I don't know anything about her from the comics. So I can, I can only tell you that I have, I have no no speculations towards everything you just everything you just said to me is is just kind of like okay blah, blah, blah. because well, because it, well, <laughs> it's all just comic book stuff related yeah. to the echo character whereas yeah. this echo character is not being introduced the same way as she as was that character in, in the, the comics. comics so yeah. so yeah. i don't have any any clue she might be russian you know she uh, could be yeah she could be russian so, and she uh, could be associated with fisk so, well, and again, all this is just specu- – <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying, but all this is just speculation type stuff. But I, what I'm saying is is I – these – I'm going off from the characters that are being introduced right now. I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not going off from characters that may – that we might get introduced to. I don't know. I mean you could. Obviously, I'm hoping. They yeah. have – you have thousands of Marvel characters that they could, that they could pull into with these, these different storylines. I can only go off from the ones that we've actually seen. You know, right. so for me anyway, so I, I don't really have a speculation as far as the, the broader picture until we get some more details about who this Echo character is. You know, who, I'm who hoping she is. more Daredevil, basically. You know? and, and, <laughs> that, and that may be, you know, there's speculation, uh, uh, you know, of uh, a certain actor's uh, involvement in other projects. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I won't spoil anything. <laughs> but my number one is uh, getting back to uh, Hawkeye. My number one is that fencing match between jack and kate that i i is just amazing that you know she starts out and she can tell that he's holding back he he can tell she can tell how good he really is and that he's not he's not attacking her with this with the with his ability with his full ability and so that she does that move at the end there where she she goes after his face and he just basically parries her her sword completely he i mean he he parries her sword like an adult man would be parrying a young fencer's sword you know yeah. i mean he he treats her exactly like someone who is highly skilled yes against someone else who's highly skilled but he's but she, she's like no i i can tell that you're way better than i am at this and so you also see that obviously she's getting some suspicions that he killed uncle armand uh so i i think that's where the whole thing at the end when she calls clint and, and tells him uh you know, that she's got some clues. I think those are the clues that we're going to find out about in the next episode, which is uh, uh, oof, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So send your feedback. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, you got any notes? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, they're all in my head. Okay. First one, though, I, I just love the idea of with Hawkeye, when we get to see the uh, tracksuit mafia in mm-hmm. the streets, and they're throwing the Molotov cocktails into Kate's apartment. <laughs> and then right away, Clint just throws it right back at them. Boom, done. Yeah. And then she, with her precise technique and shooting skills, was able to blow up one before it even arrived. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, and really, then, really cool. But within that scene, we think there's going to be like such a huge event where she's going to put out a fire with the fire extinguisher with an arrow. And it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, she goes back to she's still got some stuff to learn. So she's got a lot to learn. She doesn't have those trick arrows, which within the uh, 
preview, so it's not a spoiler. You obviously seen this previews that are on there from like the uh, advertisements and stuff like that, or advertisements, and they state, you know, they show you that one scene. He goes, she goes, what do you mean? There's no nothing. There's no such thing as trick arrows. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, she goes, that was a trick arrow, and he's like, <laughs> he rolls his eyes like an old man, <laughs> like Danny Glover. <laughs> Hence the, uh, you know, Riggs and Murtaugh. I, you really want to, you really want to tie this show into Lethal Weapon. I just don't see it, but okay, <laughs> I'll let you, I'll let you have it, man. I, I really <laughs> think it is, honestly. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you have it. I really don't see it, but no, that's fine. That's cool. Um, uh, I've only got a couple of notes that we haven't talked about yet, um, and that's. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that the Hunger Games movies are part of this universe. Because, uh, you know, he, she says, well, there, you're there. And he's like, no, that's Katniss, uh, whatever her name is from Hunger Games. Um, uh, they're on the street when they're seeing all the different heroes. Um, and then, of course, I've already yeah, talked about – Yeah, but that's about- because Hawkeye doesn't know about branding. He right, never, but, he never yeah. capitalized on his branding. Exactly. That's why, that's why Katniss <laughs> is out there and not him. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, the only other one is – I kind of already talked about. We don't know really where this, this uh, falls into the timeline, but we do know it's sometime after Tony sold – avengers tower so yes yeah it was a long after that at that point if mm-hmm. you think about it because they were already in upstate new york upstate, yeah yeah so it was sometime after 2012 so yeah anything else that's it for me that we haven't already talked about yeah all right pretty much that's done for me you know okay i had a few off the top of my head but you know we'll, we'll get to that the next episode because okay. we've already gone pretty long on this one <laughs> we are we are getting close to an hour so um, it's fine or yeah um i've got a couple of notes if you, or a couple of quotes if you just want to kind of go uh, you mentioned that uh, i stole your quotes your quotes so we can just kind of go back and forth uh sure. you already talked a little bit about this one but I, I think one of my favorite ones was at the beginning when she says when she tells her mom uh uh, love you, and then he says something about why do we just throw that around, and she says, that was my mom. Since when did your heart shrink three sizes? And he says, when a little girl in a ninja costume stole my Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next one up would be, uh, you know, some people have actually called me the world's greatest archer, and that was Kate herself. I love that. I love because he, respond, he responds with, are you one of those people? You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love uh, then when they're having their whole exchange, when he's buying like the Neosporin and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and he says, uh, he says, no, you're not because a bag of money would actually be useful to me. And then she says, oh, I do know a place where a place nearby. Would a bag of money know that? So. <laughs> and then you've already mentioned that I fought Thanos, so. Yeah. You want to take that last one? Uh, The last one, can I speak to your manager? This is like talking to furniture. Hawkeye to the <laughs> yeah. TS guy. Uh, yeah, you're... You're the shift manager. <laughs> yeah, I think that was. He's like, you're the shift manager. I want to talk to the manager. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Right. All right, Karen. Um, <laughs> uh, so you said we didn't have. I, I didn't see any Instagram um, feedback. Yeah. Uh, nothing, no feedback for this particular episode. So, but if you do, we'll get into that when we talk about feedback and how you could send it back mm-hmm. to us. And we guarantee we will be playing it the next episode. So, uh, just sure. send that us to us. Um, I've got a podcast recommendation. If you sure. if you guys are not watching Wheel of Time on Amazon, or if you are watching Wheel of Time on Amazon and you need a podcast to listen to, House Podcastica on the Pad Podcastica Network is is covering that. Uh, Wendy, Greg, and Ben are doing a wonderful job of covering that. As TV podcast entries are also uh, covering Wheel of Time, uh, and I send voice. I've been sending voicemails uh, into both. I sent a voicemail to TV Podcast Industries for episode one, and then episodes two and three I sent to uh, House Podcastica because of the recording uh, when they recorded. So, so check it out. Cool. All right. Well, I have one that I'm going to suggest, and then we're going to go right into how you could check out the Next Level Online Podcast Network stuff. So. The first one I would like to recommend would be Truist Blood. They haven't put anything out yet. They have a teaser for us. And that is from Deborah Ann Wall and Kristen Bauer. And they cover everything. They're watching this start to finish the True Blood series. So if you are a fan of True Blood on HBO, they're going to cover every episode. So we only got a teaser right now. But I'm hoping that they were, uh, you know, bring us something out a little bit more. 
and then uh, go through every episode and seeing it for the first time each other and get, getting their takes on the actual episodes. So I, I really enjoyed that show from start to finish. So I, I highly recommend that too if you're a big Deborah Ann Wall fan who was in Daredevil too, by the way. So with that, I want everybody to check out the next level radio online.com. And there you could listen to all the other or get into contact with all the other podcasts that are out there. The Spotlight with Ben Beck, The Melting Pat with Pat Johnston, and What Lurks Beneath or What Lurks Behind Podcast Zero or The Wilhelm. And obviously you could hear us, the Panels to Pixels podcast, and we have to go back, Lost Revisited, as well as Caffeine Crew, Cast of Pods, Still Afraid of the Dark, and you can listen to the backlog of DC Primetime with Rob and Ben when they cover all the CW stuff. So check that out on the next level, radioonline.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And for us, if you're listening to us, hopefully you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, but we are available on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, and like I said, all those other platforms, we are out there. Just search for Panels to Pixels Podcast and you'll see us there. If there's a chance to give us a rating, we would love to have a five-star rating from you. Yeah, uh, and for that, if you want to submit any feedback, you could easily just go to our website, www.panelstopixelspodcast.com, which is still under construction, which will be finished up by the new year. And uh, if not, you could just go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And with there, you'll see, and you'll see it tomorrow night, or maybe tonight, depending on when I get this up. <laughs> But uh, you could easily put your comments below about the new episode of Hawkeye, which would be Hawkeye Season 1, Episode 3. Um, I don't have the title for that yet. But you could also go to our Twitter page, which would be at panels, the number 2 pixels. That's panels, 2 pixels, panels, the number 2 pixels. And you could just send us feedback there. Or you could go to our email page and go to panels with pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two is spelled out T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. There you could easily just, you know, type out a whole email of what you want to say to us about your thoughts about the episode that we're covering. Or you could just, you know, record your voice and we'll play it on the next podcast itself. And with that, you could hear us on YouTube. And you just all you have to do is search YouTube and search Panels to Pixels podcast. And then if you find us, just subscribe to us. Give us a thumbs up if you really love what we're doing. We are on Instagram at Panels to Pixels podcast as well. So next week, we will continue our coverage of Hawkeye. Uh, hopefully, actually, later this week, since the episode mm -hmm. will be coming out tomorrow, we'll, we'll have that for you. Like Mark said, uh, send us your thoughts on episode three of Hawkeye. Exactly. Where else can listeners hear us, Mark? Uh, well, uh, I can be found not just here on Panels of Pixels podcast, but you could also hear me on the Parkour Entertainment Network on Adrenaline Cinema podcast. So you can find me... Uh, there, and we cover action, adventure, films, thriller films, uh, anything that gets your adrenaline going. Coming up next this week that you'll probably hear after this podcast would be our friend Jeff and I covering the movie Duel from 1971. And I can't believe that movie is 50 years old. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, uh, you can check us out there. Uh, next week we'll be covering They Live. So if you have uh, any thoughts on a movie from what year was that? 1988? I'm forgetting. Uh, I, I'm going to go with 1988, They Live. And uh, you can hear Jamie and myself, and we're covering that. And you can leave your thoughts there. Very cool. Me, I send voicemails to various podcasts that our friends do. And so you can hear my voice pop up on some of those other podcasts all right well i've had way too much cough syrup and i just <laughs> want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels the pixels podcast and we'll see you on the next panel good night good night <laughs> where's the goddamn cough syrup i need more of that <laughs>
Oh, goodness gracious. 